So yesterday I had a conversation with one of our clients that we're working with at the moment, Scott, who is an electrician by trade, has done like maintenance work in agriculture, now is a project manager, and he's looking to start his own business. And he's been through, he's got, he's got a technical background, great. He's been through our program and now built on top of that and developed like the, the controls and automation, knowledge, expertise, understanding, confidence, building on top of his electrical expertise. And now he wants to start his own business, go into controls, automation, BMS, smart home, maybe get into, go back into agriculture, industrial. And I just want to share the advice that I gave him on, on the coaching call that we had yesterday, because I think it might be helpful for some other electricians, engineers that are looking to start their own businesses. And this is not to say that I'm an, a, a guru and I know best and, you know, all of that. This is just based off my experience um, and the advice that I would give my younger self. And I'm sure there's other ways of going about it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share what I shared with Scott. So the first thing, and this is absolutely critical, um, is, is to actually have a pot of money. And I recommend saving up like six months worth of comfortable living expenses before before going into business. And there's a great book called Profit for Contractors or Profit First for Contractors that I'm not sure if it is in this book actually. Um, but anyway, that's another good, <laughs> it's another good book. This might have been something that I learned from a guy called Nassim Taleb. And I think it was mentioned in his Black Swan book where it, it's, it's called Fuck You Money. And he was talking about it in respect to saving up enough, enough money, like if you're an employee, where if, you're, if it ever got to a point where you were so sick of your job, so sick of your boss, you could just say, fuck you. I don't, I don't need this salary. I've got a pot to be stable and comfortable for six months. You know, that will give me enough time to find another job. You know, I don't need you. I can just leave when I want. And I, that is that, that alone is just massive. If, if you are an employee, that gives you an incredible amount of power, removes so much fear and anxiety and removes the need to, to be working for the man. It gives you like autonomy. It's an incredible feeling. So I'd recommend anyone who's an employee does that. But certainly before starting business, because what you don't want to do is go into a go into business for the first time from from a place of desperation. Um, you know, where what you'll end up doing is because you'll have bills to pay, you'll have, you know, clothes to put on your kids and you end up just, you might put quotes out, you might put proposals out there and then the client might try and hustle you down and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I see that this other competitor's doing it for this price, you know, what can you do? And it's just a vicious cycle where then you get to a point where you're not making any profit, and that's why why I mentioned profit first for contractors, and you just you just end up like everyone else, where you can't charge a premium, you can't make any profit, and it's just what's the point of going into business if you're not able to make a profit to reinvest and, and grow the business and stay in business long term, support customers long term get better ultimately. So that's one thing. And then also, yeah, you just don't want to be operating from a place of fear and desperation where you need that money. You're desperate for that money because people smell it. It's like, it's like you're like in the dating scene. If you ever, you know, been on these dating apps and whatnot, you know, and you're dating a girl and you maybe you're trying to secure the deal on the first day. It's just, it just might, unless you're a pro, obviously, come across a little bit desperate and just put people off. People can smell it. People don't want des want to work with desperate people. You know, we always push needy people away, generally speaking. So that's the first thing. I would recommend six months of living expenses. And if you can, live below your means. Just live below your means and build up that pot. The second thing is Scott was talking about trying to do this within six months. So in six months time, he wants to have made that transition and be 
fully self-employed business owner. Well, firstly, he like he doesn't have a pot at the moment, so that might take a while to build up. But what I've what I've mentioned here is a note is just remove these time frames. Like I think it's good to put time frames in place, like goals, but don't don't hold yourself to those time frames, um, especially if they're completely unrealistic. But the problem is you don't know what's realistic or not. If you've never been through this process before and it's all new, you have no concept of how long this is going to take. We've got various biases as humans, like and we can't, we always feel that things are going to happen quickly and smoothly, you know, and just go along in a nice, you know, upward trajectory. But it just doesn't happen like that in reality. And I'm, I still fall prey to that. And I still haven't learned that. But it is the reality. Things take far longer than you, than you can expect. Like, let's say that you've been through the process before. Then, of course, you can make it much quicker because you've been through the steps. You can learn from your mistakes. You can streamline things. You can do that. But what I recommended to Scott is just, just remove time frames. And rather than saying, I've got to achieve this in six months time, just focus on the day to day, the week to week. Am I doing something, you know, as much as I possibly can, you know, without burning out, but just chipping away, plodding along, moving closer to this point of where you can transition fully into becoming like a full-time contractor or business owner. Like just focus on the micro day by day and just kind of remove these, you know, fixed timeframes because you just put unnecessary pressure on yourself. There's going to be a lot of getting out of your comfort zone, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. There's also, it's also incredibly exciting and fulfilling doing this, but it's all new and it's a little bit scary. So like adding these additional pressures of putting these arbitrary timeframes on things, just it's just unnecessary and it just adds more pressure, more stress. Just focus on the micro day to day, week to week, and just, just see where you are in six months time. And if you still need to do more every day, every week, then that's what you're gonna have to do. Like the, the without getting too woo woo, like, the universe things will just happen when they're meant to happen when you've done enough work when you've when you ultimately deserve it you know and you can't predict that so that was the second thing remove arbitrary time frames the third thing now this is this should be absolutely obvious to to anyone who's looking to progress their business in a technical industry is to actually have the technical skill set and i'm not saying that you need to be and I'm actually encouraging people not to be 100% confident in their technical ability because you will never be 100% in your technical ability, especially in like the controls, automation, BMS, smart home industry. There's just too much. You you just won't be. And that's a, that's a form of procrastination as well. Like you will always be able to learn more and do more, but that would just prevent you from actually taking action, taking those steps. And that's what actually matters. Like learning and studying is good to a certain point that will give you like enough confidence or hopefully give you enough confidence to actually start taking these steps. But it's the action steps. It's actually doing the work every day, you know, taking action ultimately that's actually going to be the deciding factor here. And so what I'm recommending is is get up to like a technical level where you kind of know the process that you're going to be offering to people. You're sort of 80% there, you know? So that's that's obvious. Um, that's one thing that, that Scott has, which is brilliant. But the problem is, you, and I've seen this so many times before when I, when I used to work at Loxon as a partner coach, is like guys would come in, electrical, mostly electrical, heating, HVAC background, and they would jump forward. And then this is through no fault of their own, by the way. This is just the way that Loxon marketed things, where ultimately... They're coming from like an installation background and they jump right ahead to the final thing in project delivery, which is PLC programming. They come on the, the five day training and I used to coach these people, do these trainings, but they're missing so much. This is like the final piece of the piece of the puzzle, the PLC programming. But it's fair enough. Like if you're going on like a manufacturer training, KNX, locks on, control four, like you've only got a small window of time, like four or five days to learn the system. And that's the place to sort of learn the system and, and go through the software and how to do some programming and stuff. But there's so many steps that come before that. And unfortunately, if you don't know these steps that come before this final layer, 
then, well, firstly, you won't have the confidence to go out and talk to clients and understand their problems, come up with solutions, give them confidence that you know what you're talking about because you understand the process and what's necessary. So you may not even win clients or projects in the first place, but then let's say that you do, you don't know how to piece it all together and deliver that successfully and actually make money, you know? And the amount of takeover projects that I've been involved with where you, it's just an absolute shit show. It's just an absolute mess. The client's unhappy. The installers probably had a really crap time and not made any money, probably got a bad reputation. And yeah, the client then has to pay again for, for someone like myself to, to fix it. Uh, and this has happened time and time again because people don't have clarity and confidence in the process in their technical skill set so that's the third thing technical skill set now the final thing that i said to scott was because he was he was just going back to these time frames he was saying <clears throat> that he wanted to make this full transition from full-time employee to full-time business owner in six months and i'm sure that can happen for people and especially if you've built up a pot of money and you've got support and you've been through the process before you know maybe you've got a business partner i don't know for me, this is what I did. I did this in gradual phases, probably over the course of, yeah, from, from full-time employee to full-time business owner, my own work, not subcontracting to anyone. That probably took me about two years, two, three years, but I did it in phases. So this is my, my last piece of advice is, is gradual phases. So... You might, what you might want to do is consider full-time, stay as a full-time employee, but focus on getting some private contracting work in on the side, you know, after working times, maybe you take your day off here and there if you have to and tag it onto a weekend. Obviously, you've got your weekends. So that's like the first thing. Maybe you, you, you do that. And whilst we're going through these phases, we're bringing in extra money to put into that pot, that six months of living expenses pot. So we're building it up quicker and we're not having to just rely solely on our salary from the full-time employment. Then the next phase is you might have a, a decent employer or you might not, but if you're valuable to them, they probably won't want to lose you. So you might be able to negotiate going down part-time. So I did this, I negotiated this with r and Industrial when I was a controls engineer. I went down four days a week, had Friday off, and then went down to three days a week, had Thursday, Friday off. And that gave me, when once I was a bit more established and had a network of people, um, I was getting my own private jobs in small, normally sort of like small projects, day rate work, that kind of thing. So I was able to do that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, some Sundays. And also you can, it's giving you, you're, you're able to get some time to actually focus on establishing the business, like operations, admin, like all of these things, like websites. Yeah, like admin, finances, all of these little things that, you need time to put put in place. So that's that's the next step. Now, this, then after after you've done that part time private work sort of split, then what you might want to do, and this is what I did, is I landed. I, I was I was ready to sort of like move away from employment completely. And what I did is I I got a twelve month contract for a BMS high-end residential smart home company called Neo System Automation. 12-month contract. I was a BMS engineer for them ultimately, amongst doing various other things. And that was kind of, that was contracted. That, that Well, that was a fixed contracted. I was safe. You know, I was getting paid more than I would have been as an employee. Again, banking that additional money. I'm, I'm living below my means through this period of time. Building up that pot, building up that pot. And at the same time, I was also able to carry on doing private work, um, you know, outside of this 12 month fixed contract, did that for a year. And then, then I made that, that complete transition where then I had enough of a pot. I had more than six months savings. So that gave me confidence. Like if I didn't get business in, in the first month, the second month, the third month, which, which didn't happen because I'd been through these phases and I've established relationships with people and 
building things in the business and all these things. So I was okay, but I still had that buffer, that pot that gave me confidence that meant that I didn't have to go into business from a place of fear. I was able to decide, look, I'm not doing anything less than I think back then. By that time, I think I was like, I'm not doing anything less than 500 quid a day. Um, if I was doing um, day rate work, I'm not doing hourly and I'm not doing half days. It's 500 quid, not doing anything less. And I, I had the confidence to stick to that because I knew I was safe for over six months and I had other things in the pipeline. I knew my value. I knew my worth. And this is it's a big thing comes down to confidence. And I've had no confidence in the past, like genuinely, you know, as a back in the day as a service maintenance contract um, engineer, um, I've really, really struggled with confidence. Like I've struggled with anxiety. Like I've been through therapy and me medication and all of this sort of stuff. And what I've realized through the years is just, it just comes down to confidence and doing this in this way gave me the confidence and it wasn't like an instant thing it removed a lot of that stress that anxiety and i felt like i was ready i was confident to actually go in and and make this work as a full-time business owner so yeah that's my advice if you're electrician heating engineer hvac guy and you're you're wanting to make that leap don't just make that leap ultimately be strategic don't put yourself under any stress and yeah, see you later.